while on one hand, we need to bear in mind that that was the campaign. So we need to remember that, you know, all these parties and all the expert, all these exponents, they were trying to uh, come out with very strong statements and with very strong um, positions. On the other hand, we also have to remember that Meloni has been, to a certain degree, quite china skeptic for the longest time. Even when she was part of the Berlusconi government in the early 2000s, she was, you know, actively um, supporting uh, um, Tibet. And therefore, it shouldn't come too much as a surprise that this is her position towards Taiwan. Moreover, of course, uh, there are economic interests, which is, you know, the idea that, you know, the closer Italy becomes to Taiwan, then probably the better deal it will get out of um, securing supply chains for semiconductors, for example, for its own businesses. So we need to balance these two elements. One is the campaigning element, and the other one is the fact that indeed there is a core where the soon probably to be prime minister has an interest in uh, uh, displaying a narrative at the very least that is pro Taiwan. After all, she's probably, I don't want to say the only um, exponent, but definitely one of the very few that has uh, um, guarantee, granted sorry, um, an interview to Taiwan's central news agency during her campaign, which is quite unusual for an Italian PM to do so. Is this because of seeing Taiwan's importance, or do you feel it's because of her uh, China critic, kind of anti-China sentiment? So I don't think one excludes the other. Um, I think on one hand, there are three elements why the Meloni, well, her position towards Taiwan is, as we've defined it so far, warmer compared, or at least, you know, vocally warmer compared to other prime ministers. One is what I told you before, which is the sort of this, I think anti-China is a bit strong of a word, but definitely, you know, China's skeptic, PRC skepticism. The other one is definitely seeing the advantages of being, of having a good relationship with Taiwan economically, but also, you know, if we think about the, uh, the general asset of the international community, it's quite likely that, you know, uh, Meloni sees Taiwan as a, a good and a positive actor. But we also need to remember the third element, which I do think plays quite an important role, which is the fact that Meloni, during the campaign, has been growing a closer relationship towards um, what is the Washington line. So probably she was also trying to display a policy towards Taiwan that would please Washington, and this is likely to continue during the government. Will there be a change in Italy's role in the G7, given that um, she's been more um, active in terms of supporting Taiwan and being more vocal about that support? I think so. I think there will be a little bit of a change. Um, the main reason is that at the end of the day, this is a populist government. So we've seen in the past how populist governments, Italian populist governments at the very least, tend to be much more vocal in the international scene, which means, of course, that yes, for sure, we're going to see changes in the G7, but probably they're not as negative as people think they would be because of this closing up between Washington and Rome. Should the administration change and should we get not only a Republican government, but a Republican government led by Trump, then, of course, we would still have Rome close to that type of government, and that, of course, the line would change in accordingly. What does that translate to in terms of support for Taiwan or policy towards China? The only thing that I can see that may be a little bit at Taiwan's disadvantage, if anything, in the long term, is the idea of, you know, diversification, the idea that we cannot be as... Um, reliant on just one source of uh, uh, one source for um, semiconductors and other high technologies. So in that regard, probably you would see more of a push towards reshoring. How does that affect ties with Asia, especially Taiwan and China, given that um, like in the United States, they mentioned how um, jobs have gone to China and um, the anti-immigration wave. If you think about the aftermath of the financial crisis and the euro crisis, everybody was very much going after Chinese investments and, you know, getting into the Chinese market as much as possible, taking advantage of the entire uh, 
um, you know, Chinese capital offer that suddenly, not suddenly, but you know, that, that was there much more substantially than before. And that sort of uh, lived together with a sentiment that, you know, China was still selling much cheaper products, mostly manufacturing products, and in the case of Italy specifically, textile products, and that, you know, um, Italian manufacturer could not um, compete with Chinese manufacturing when it came to this. So you had this sort of uh, um, ambivalent position. On one hand, people really, businesses really wanted to take advantage of the situation. On the other, you also had this grievance towards this uh, quote and unquote newcomer into the market that was pushing the, the locals out. What's the balance now? Do you see it going towards, um, you know, business opportunities or do you see it going towards um, being wary of China's investments? I think he definitely went towards being wary of China's investments, like a hundred percent. On the other hand, I do think that businesses are still very much uh, committed to the Chinese market. And the reason why you now there are movements toward diversification is not because businesses got warier of Chinese investments or investing in the Chinese market is because of the dynamic zero COVID policy that made the, the regulatory system and the business system so unpredictable that then businesses decided, you know, we need sort of an insurance that uh, we're not going to lose such a big chunk of our business if this, I don't know, if a port gets locked down or if a business gets closed. So, yes, sentiment has definitely moved in the direction of a warrior feeling towards China, which to a certain extent comes with a warmer feeling towards Taiwan, but at the same time is not necessarily stable 